All right, so this is a 1974 uh, Yamaha RD200. Uh, it's the parallel twin, but it's split vertically as opposed to horizontally, which all the larger ones are. Uh, so basically, we, we're uh, our job was to redesign, um, to tune it for Formula 125 uh, racing, which the RD200 is actually allowed as long as you have smaller carbs. Uh, 22 mil is as big as we can get. So uh, basically the choice that I made was to the stock connecting rod is 100 millimeter center, center to center, 14 millimeter little end, and 20 millimeter big end pin. Uh, so 20, that's actually 20 by 26 by 14. So what I chose to do, that these rods are actually readily available, but I didn't know that at the time. Uh, and the other thing, this piston... Of course, uh, Weissco is better, but, but they did used to use what the Dykes rings, which are these weird, the weird uh, L style rings, 14 millimeter wrist pin, uh, RD200. So what I chose to do, I looked through the books, found all my information, came up with a plan. I actually chose a uh, Vossner brand, uh, Aprilia RS125, which is a 20 millimeter big end pin, so 20 by 26 by 15, which is a downside, and a 15 millimeter uh, wrist pin. So what that allowed me to do with 15 millimeter was actually change over 15 millimeter uh, by, we overboard the cylinders from 52 to 54, which is maximum allowable overbore. So we're at 54 mil, um, but by using a 15 mil wrist pin, it allows for use of pretty much every 125, you know, most of the, all the top 125 pistons, uh, CR, KX, YZ. I chose a YZ125 piston, uh, mainly because they're readily available, uh, but it's a single th thin ring, flat top piston. Uh, the concept there is flat top piston should give us more control over the transfer streams uh, as opposed to the uh, domed piston. So, uh, and also Teflon coated, a ton of different versions of these. So with this rod on this piston, that ought to be a pretty darn good choice for what we're uh, doing. Now the downside with this, of course, uh, is 15 millimeter uh, had to be ground down to 14. So he's marked done. After I do that side, then I flip it, surface ground from 15 to 14. I would not mill this or anything like that. I do that all on the surface grinder. And of course, then the OD is actually stronger, too, is bigger too. So what I had to do, I, I have it mocked up here with the case. I just have a loose fit pin and just have, a, have the original bearing on there. And just to make sure, I always like to, one of my general rules, rules of thumb, if you don't have anything else to go by, pretty much every clearance crank web to the crank, uh, to the case, you know, around pretty much 10 thou is what I'm going for. So I have more than 10 thou through here. Uh, it does not rub anywhere. And I basically just, you know, grind down the outsides. This is, is this isn't cleaned or prepped or anything. Uh, so I have these rods all set up, a set of these rods, new pins, uh, bearings. I normally use Pro X, uh, 20 by 26 by 14. Uh, they did not have those in stock, so I found. I forget what these even are now. Uh, RM125 probably. Uh, so it's 20. Oh, it's uh, 20 by 26 by 14. A little bit of tarnish on this one, which I have to clean up. But uh, the other thing about this as well is stock Yamaha used to use uh, what they now call an M cage, or at least what Pro X calls an M cage. It's an indented cage there uh, with always captive rollers. The uh, it's, it's actually far superior, the flat cage. So this is actually flat rather than having the, the indents on it. Uh, this is far superior. Uh, it's also silver caged, and it also has more rollers. So you actually have more, um, you know, more surface area for the rollers. Uh, so we converted to these two. So uh, bigger bear, better bearing, better rod, longer rod. So this, uh, I think I had mentioned, this is 100 millimeter center to center. This is 110. Uh, the other thing we've got, 
uh, is quite, won't be quite right because it's 14 to 15. But you can also see that the this piston is actually shorter on compression height than RD200 by a bit. This rod is 10 millimeter longer. So in order to line everything up, it turned out that I needed, I believe this is about seven and a half mil. And again, it's not finished. I still have to do all the finish work before I assemble. So we're running a seven and a half mil packing plate on these. Uh, I've already built one of these motors for uh, the customer. I've got another one to build. Uh, I wanted to get this video in before I assembled it. The other thing we also do is we pretty much run, we could have saved some money, but we run pretty much genuine Yamaha, which is mostly Koyo, uh, but genuine Yamaha bearings. Uh, now, I don't know how much that matters really, but the one difference I do see in the bearings, uh, these are both uh, 6305 bearings. This is a standard one, and all the standard ones pretty much have a, a shiny cage in the middle. Uh, one difference I see on the Koyos is that they do have a, like a matte finish. That implies that they have a different heat treating method uh, for them. So this is going to be a race motor. This is going to be full on, you know, uh, 11,000 RPM uh, repeatedly after race after race. So we didn't really want to skimp on bearings. Like I said, we, we ended up spending kind of way too much for all these bearings, but you know, to have a bearing fail on something like this, especially high rev, constant road race motor, uh, should be pretty high horsepower. Uh, now, the other thing, um, so the other thing with the crank, RD200, RD125, uh, use this center, uh, the center piece. This is a labyrinth seal. I'm not sure how good I can get that. Uh, you can see these little ribs. So basically this, the way a labyrinth seal works is it, um, it basically rides on this, but it's it's just a little bit of play in it. But the the pressures are happening, are, you know, the crankcase is compressing and then pulling carbon, you know, intake in so quickly that if there's any, as, as this, you know, as this side compresses and pushes in, it basically diffuses it like five separate times. So it doesn't have time to get over, to cross over from side to side. Now, the downside of this is that you do actually need, for an RD200, uh, I was hoping they'd be the same. RD125 is actually, RD125 is smaller, but you have to build, um, you have to build this fixture, which basically allows the wheel, uh, it has a lip there, has the wheel, um, and then, that allows it so it can't fall through. So now you can put that in, you can press it out. Because um, that's actually the other side. But so we got a crank build to do. I'll we'll also take some footage of that uh, with the RS125 uh, rods, YZ125 pistons, packing plates. Uh, we bored the cylinders already. We'll also have another video on these heads on ways that we can improve that. First off, I have to change the squish from the angle to flat top. I also have to bore that out for to 54. And I also um, like to swoop this out and get a sharp edge on this. Uh, the Aprilia engineers said that uh, their rule was anytime they radiused from, uh, from the squish to the combustion chamber, anytime they radius this off, they lost power. So I like to sweep this out with a sweeping tool I made to get a nice sharp edge. Uh, we'll have a little more than 50% squish area. We'll have a little more, which probably should be the other way. Uh, but it's a lot easier to take metal off than it is to put it back. So uh, for this season in Formula 125, we're going to be racing these RD200s. Uh, and, you know, we'll make adjustments as we go. Uh, so that's pretty much the overall layout of this, of these motors. Like I say, one's already been built, tested. Uh, I had it out road testing. It's quick. Um, we've also got expansion chambers to make for it. And then the full package will be in Georgia, February 18th, I believe. So we'll see how all this goes, but it should be a fun year, uh, racing Formula 125.